You know those texts the Secret Service deleted from January 6th? Well, our next guest, Ken Klippenstein, would like to speak to the manager. Ken has filed a complaint with the National Archives through the National Security Counselors over the deleted texts related to January 6th. The letter reads, I write on behalf of my client, Ken Klippenstein, to formally request that the acting archivist immediately request the Attorney General initiate actions to recover the text messages from January 5th and 6th. Reporter at The Intercept, Ken Klippenstein, joins us today in studio to discuss further. Welcome. Hi, good to be with you guys. Okay, help us understand what's going on here. What is the uh, expectation in terms of actually getting these text messages, and what do people hope to find? Yeah, so when I broke the story last week of the Secret Service messages on January 5th and 6th being deleted, which we now know more about from subsequent reporting, uh, metadata exists to suggest that those messages did exist and that they no longer um, have access to them. I uh, spoke to my attorney, Kel McClanahan, who specializes in national security cases, and he availed me of this administrative process referenced in the letter, wherein you can um, compel the Justice Department not only to um, consider taking ownership of this and uh, uh, using more of their resources to try to recover these text messages. They have things like um, um, they have technological means to access uh, deleted messages and things like that that mm. uh, other agencies might not. But in addition to this, it uh, compels the Justice Department to make a formal um, determination as to what exactly happened. Uh, you know, did, what was was federal le records law broken when they deleted these things? Which I was frustrated after I reported on the dele deletion of the messages. I had hoped that media would follow up on these kind of things, and I mm. thought, oh, for sure, someone is going to file something like yeah. this. but it didn't. So, so two questions. Uh, also, is the technical process of recovering these messages, people would probably be interested in that that's even possible, or right. do these, do they go, there's some other agency that somehow has them, or you have to go to the, with a phone company to get them back? Well, what is that, how does that look? Part of the problem with this is that Secret Service has not been specific about what exactly happened. So when you delete something on a cell phone, that doesn't just mean it's completely disappeared. There is a, uh, there's a trace of it still left on the hard drive. And so you could, you know, presumably go into these phones and try to, the same way that a criminal investigator, the FBI, might look at things and try to conduct uh, forensics, they call it, when they go into these things and extract them from these devices. Presumably they could do that. Uh, whether or not they can for certain, we don't know because the Secret Service has not been forthcoming about exactly, specifically what they mean by that those messages. And, and does, for some reason, the Secret Service operate in some kind of gray zone where it's not clear what records laws pertain to them or something like that? Well, as the name would suggest, uh, they, <laughs> they live up to the title, they're very secretive. And in interviewing a uh, former Secret Service uh, for this story, I think that uh, what we're going to see, and I suspect that on the part of Democrats, what they're worried about coming out is this culture of secrecy that exists within it, above and beyond what they're authorized. Because obviously, there's some things that you know need to be secret, things like continuity of government, how to protect, you know, uh, pr protocols for right. protecting elected leaders. That makes sense. But beyond that, uh, in interviewing uh, people, they told me that more than any other agency, executive branch agency they've worked with, the attitude is, you know. We are sort of the Praetorian Guard. You do not trust people from outside the agency, even oversight officials that have uh, proper jurisdiction to look at these things. Mm. And so I think it's interesting that, uh, first of all, that that culture exists, that um, what we're looking at now might have something to do with that, and that um, congressional investigators, uh, the Democrats that chair the committees, I think um, are going to have to make a decision as to whether or not they want to go full bore, find out what happened, and potentially embarrass this institution, which I don't think that there's as much of an appetite for as, as people might imagine. Yeah, that's what's so interesting. Because of the emphasis Democrats have chosen to put on 1-6, with the hearings, you can't turn on MSNBC or CNN without hearing kind of nonstop coverage of this event. There seems to be a real confidence that this is perhaps the only good thing, the only good tidbit that Democrats are offering affirmatively going into midterm season. It, there was an expectation, I think, that there's all the incentives in the world to follow up on this. This was a real kind of, um, you know, red herring of sorts. A deleted text it doesn't get any better than that. But you're saying that because of some of these institutional issues, that there was some reluctance from your perspective to following up on this? Yeah. Um, you know, when a president comes into office, they take ownership of the different executive branch agencies. And so now Biden's in charge. If you look at one of the Secret Service agents, uh, that you know had a role in January 6th in the sense that um, he was detailed to the White House and Secret Service agents I've interviewed say that's extraordinarily unusual to, to, to detail somebody to the White House in that way. I don't mean mm -hmm. working at the White House, I mean it's sort of like a political appointment. And he's re since returned to the agency, is still assistant director, and he had talked to uh, Mike Pence's deputy national security advisor on that day saying, you know, we need to 
evacuate him. We need to get him out of this. And the effect of that could have been to, to remove him from the process of certifying the election results. Now, mm -hmm. these are all questions that need to be investigated. But he, as it stands, he's currently the assistant director of the Secret Service. He hasn't been removed. And, you know, in, in, in the interviews that I've conducted, I think that there's not a lot of appetite on the part of the White House. Biden is historically, he's an institutionalist. He doesn't want to rock the boat too much. That's sort of the pitch of his whole presidency that we're not going to. And so I think there, I don't know that it's going to be true. That I think we, we look at the J6 hearings, there are certainly politicized aspects of it. And so you look at that, it's easy to take from that the conclusion that, oh, they're going to be really aggressive in all this. But it's sort of complicated. They could be aggressive in a partisan way that focuses on Trump and doesn't look at the institutions that, that, that may have played some kind of role in January 6th. What are we expecting to see if we were able to look at the text? Are we talking about text specifically from, you know, Trump's, uh, leaving the, the with the speech that he gave and you know wanting to go to the White will there be tax of oh he's trying to grab the wheel or whatever they were discussing <laughs> and that uh, the, that's the thing we don't know and that's yeah. why I filed this thing because there's so much speculation about what's going on and that just irritates me because it's like these are things for which there are administrative remedies that we can try to use some of the institutional power that exists to find out what the specifics are so we don't have to guess and throw these aspersions around and say the reality is I don't know what the message is said the 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 um, Metadata of them shows that ones pertaining to January 5 and 6 were um, deleted. Um, and what was interesting about that is they were deleted, the metadata shows, after they were requested by not just the inspector general, mm. oh. but congressional committees as well. Mm. So what does it show? I don't know. But that timing makes me think that, you know, it might be of interest to the investigation. So what rationale has been offered for why the messages were deleted? Well, that's what's so interesting. So the spokesperson for the Secret Service initially denied it. And it was kind of funny because my story comes out and I think, oh, gosh, I'm a little nervous because the language was so strong. He said, we vehemently deny uh, categorically all this kind of stuff. And then the next day they walked it back and it's like, okay, well, some things were missing. And it was sort of this tiered process of like, okay, turns out that was right. Turns out that was right. And they basically you know, conceded a lot of it, but still have not provided any specifics as to what exactly happened. So then we're in a situation where the worst sort of partisan voices can just guess and, and, you know, assume what's there. And we just don't know. We don't know. What is the timeline, you think, for them responding to this legal action you've taken? Um, a matter of weeks. That's what's nice about this. And why I was surprised that no one else in media had activated this, because, um, whether or not the Justice Department decides to inject itself in this and intervene, they have to make a determination as to whether the law was broken. And so that can finally give us some concrete answers as to what exactly happened. So we're not in this kind of um, Twitter punditry territory of saying like, you know, surely this proves X, Y, and Z. Yeah, it's, account it's an accountability issue, right? It's exactly. people that people deserve to know. And that's the thing, the Inspector General of Homeland Security was himself a Trump appointee. So this narrative that it's, um, you know, Biden, Biden administration holding, um, uh, you know, Trump to account. It's a lot more complicated than that. Um, they are the ones that have gone toe to toe with the Secret Service and trying to find these things. And what's interesting is, um, um, when when you know Congress talks about this, there are multiple avenues of inquiry. It's not just the January Sixth Committee. The Department of Homeland Security itself, through its Inspector General, has appropriate access to these things. Um, so there are different. So there are these parallel lines that make the entire investigation a, a, a lot more complex than I think the cable news sort of coverage of it would suggest. Hmm. And, and so I just want to follow up on a point you made earlier. You're saying that because of this FBI detail in the White House, there could have been a decision made to remove Mike Pence from the chain of certifying well, the election again, results it's very, at all. It's very complicated. So um, I don't think the Secret Service was wrong to be worried on that day about um, um, you know succession questions and continuity of government and protecting um, you know, Pelosi and the, and the heads of government. That makes sense. At the same time, the effect of that would have been to, um, you know, move him into a bunker. And actually, Pence, in that moment, when, he's, when the Secret Service um, uh, limo, the vice presidential limo comes up, they say, get in. He says, I'm not getting in there. He's like, well, you guys are going to whisk me away. You're going to take me away. And he refused to. He said, and, and he hmm. insinuated that he didn't trust one of the people in the Secret Service car. Again, hmm. we don't know why that is. It could be that he just wanted to go and certify, get this thing done with, and didn't. Or it could be it was a legitimate, in interviewing people that work on economy of government and uh, Secret Service agents, they said that in that situation, it, it could be legitimate to be worried about the president's safety. I mean, there was unrest, you know, people got injured. So it could just be a misunderstanding, and maybe he was 
overly nervous about what it would mean. And then another, an entire another factor is these circuit, secret service agents say that often they have their protocols and then the person, the protectee as they call them, doesn't necessarily co cooperate with them because they're just like, this is ridiculous. I can, you know, let me, do, I don't want to look weak by, you know, running out. I want to, um, you know, there are questions of political optics. So maybe he just didn't want to, you know, embarrass himself or, or draw duration for, for leaving and, and potentially delaying the election. That, that's my whole point in all this, is we don't know, and I wish the media would use some of these avenues of inquiry to, to, to get answers so that we don't have to guess. Mm. Well, so exciting that you decided to right. get these answers, and we'll <laughs> we wish you luck, and we'd love to see what's in these text messages. Thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah, thanks for being here so much. We'll be back with more Rising right after this.